안녕하십니까 니콜라스입니다. Today we are going to talk about SQL versus no SQL databases and when would I choose one over the other. So let's get started first by talking about the term no SQL. No SQL means not only SQL or not SQL, but no SQL doesn't mean only one kind of database. No SQL is a very big group of databases. This is, for example, like me saying Hanguk Umshik and non Hanguk Umshik. The non Hanguk Umshik is going to be a very big category. It's the same thing with No SQL. So, if you look at some of the SQL databases, for example, MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, these databases, yes, maybe they do some things different, maybe they have different features, but at the core, they're an SQL database. In the NoSQL world, we have many different databases that are not related to each other. So today, I want to talk about three categories for NoSQL databases. One is document databases, the other one, key value databases, and at last, graph databases. An example of a document database is MongoDB. MongoDB is a very popular, the most famous document database, and what it basically allows you to do is save your data as a JSON document. What that means is that you don't really have rows and columns like on SQL, which by the way, we have a video on SQL, so go and check it out after this video. But a document database allows you to basically save any sort of data you want with any shape that you want. So for example, on SQL, you have rows and the structure of the data is very strict and there is not much room for flexibility. In the case of MongoDB, you can save whatever you want and the data doesn't have to look the same. For key value databases, I wanna give you two examples. One is CassandraDB and the other one is DynamoDB. CassandraDB is also considered as a column-wide database. But the point is that in Cassandra, you can write and read things very, very fast. So for example, Cassandra can write hundreds of thousands of items per second. That's really, really fast. Cassandra is used by companies like Apple that stores 10 petabytes of data on Cassandra or Netflix or Instagram or Uber. These sort of companies need to save a lot of data very, very fast. Or if you have like a search engine where you need to read a lot of data really quickly, this is, for example, a good case for Cassandra. Another example for key value databases is DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a serverless and distributed key value database that is created by Amazon. And for example, Duolingo, the language learning application, uses DynamoDB to write more than 24,000 items per second. So key value databases are very good if you have to do that. You have to write a lot or you have to read a lot really quickly. The thing with key value databases compared to document databases is that you don't have that much freedom into what sort of data you can get out of them. And you have to think in advance, what are you going to look for in the data before you save it? On SQL, for example, we don't worry about how we're going to get the data. We are worried about the structure of the data and we're sure we can get the data and we can modify the data later. On something like DynamoDB, you have to know how are you going to access the data before you save it. Because as always, there is a trade-off. And if you want something that is really fast, like DynamoDB, there is, has to be a thing that you cannot do. And in this case, on DynamoDB, you cannot query things the way you would do on SQL. So again, you have to think about how your data will be retrieved before you put it in. And that's an example of key value databases. And last but not least, graph databases are databases that are used when you don't really need columns or documents, but when you need to know relationships between nodes. So what that means is basically, if you are making a social network, like Facebook, you are going to need something like a graph database. And actually, that's what Facebook uses for their database, or one of their databases. They created their own data store called Tau. And Tau is a graph database. What that means is that instead of having columns or documents, you store entities and you connect them through relationships, like user likes a photo, user is a friend of this one, user shares this. These sort of things are better expressed on a graph database than on a document database or an SQL database. And this is why, like I said, Facebook created their own. Another very heavily used graph database is called Neo4G. So if you are building a social network, go and check it out. So, which one would I choose? SQL versus NoSQL. So if you've been watching, you know that NoSQL versus SQL is not a good comparison because there are many kinds of NoSQL databases. But having said this, I will answer this question by saying that most of the time, 90% of the time, if I have a normal project where I have the server, where I don't do any fancy things, most of the time, 
I am going to choose an SQL database. The reason why is because most of the business requirements, most of the ideas that come into my head can be expressed very easily on an SQL database. If you've been paying attention, you realize that these databases, the NoSQL databases, are databases specifically engineered when you have a specific problem. Most people are not going to have those problems and most people are not building the next Facebook so they don't have to use a graph database for example. And even having said this, if you think of Instagram, Instagram started on a Postgres database and as they grew eventually they had to move on to a graph database. I always start with an SQL database and I push it as far as I can and if, if I need to move on, I will look for somewhere to move on that fixes my problem. It's better to fix the problems where they come instead of thinking that there might be a problem. So I'm going to use a graph database, for example. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think on the comments. Do you have a favorite NoSQL database? Do you have a favorite SQL database? In my opinion, I have a favorite SQL database and that is SQL Lite. I just love the project. And if you want me to, I can make a video comparing SQL databases, which is also a cool thing. As always, don't forget to be happy. Don't forget to eat kimchi. Kamsamida. Taranghyo. Bye bye.